Hey YouTube, Dan from South Hawk Computing here today, and we're going to be doing a NAS server with our tomato firmware on our home router. So let's get right into it. Today's router is going to be an Asus RTN66U, I think. Yep, that is correct. And the important thing to remember here is that your router itself has some sort of USB connection, be it USB 2 or 3.0. So this way you could actually share something out. So first step here, we're going to plug in our USB device. Uh, in this example here, it's going to be an external 100 gig hard drive. So let's go here. We're going to go ahead and connect it into our USB jack on the router here. Get a good angle. There you go. Now that that's plugged in, you can head back to the router. Stop that video. I'm going to just use Safari in this example. And this particular IP address that I have set for the router is 196, oops, sorry, 192.168.10.1. Most likely yours is going to be 192.168.1.1. So the firmware that I have chosen for this particular router is called Advanced Tomato. It's a variation of the Chevy Tomato firmware that you'll find. This version of Advanced Tomato is 2.9331. So the first thing that we want to do is head over to USB and NAS and USB support. First thing you want to make sure is the core USB is actually turned on, which is great. And if we scroll down here, we see we have two attached devices to our particular router here. The one that we want is this guy here in the example. And as you can see, this particular drive had two sets of partitions. The partition that I'm interested in is the 100 gigabyte one here. So what I'm gonna do first is copy its path. And what I did right there was highlight it and say copy. You also want to make sure that it is mounted. That's very important. So once we've established, oh, hello, it's a messenger. Once we've established that, we're going to head on over to the next part here, file sharing. Next, we want to enable the file sharing. Um, this one here, we'll we'll do it with authentication. And I'm going to do the username NAS and. Oh, and I have to put in NAS for the password too, which is fine. This is just an example. And next, we need to make a share for this through the router. So I'm going to go here, and we're going to give it a name. So just something easy like 100 gigabyte, like the disk label is. The path that we copied before, I'm going to paste into there. And if you want to put the description, just say anything simple. My 100. Over here, obviously, if you want to be able to send data to it, you want to change this to read and write, and whether or not you want to share hidden. So once everything is set, we're going to hit save. So now that we've created a file share through the router, what's next? On a Mac, it's a little bit tricky. You just need to know the right things to type in. We're going back to the desktop here. So the next question is, how do you connect to this file share on a Mac? Well, make sure you're in a Finder. If you're not, not sure, just go to your little dock over here, click on Finder, and we're going to go to the Go menu and select Connect to Server. Next, since it's a Samba share, we're going to do SMB colon slash slash the IP address of your tomato router. In my case, it's one, oh, sorry, 192.168.10 and 1 slash the share name. So that was 100 GB. And then we're going to hit connect. Next, here on this window, you're going to type in the username, which we uh, created before was NAS, and the password that we created was also NAS. And voila, that 100 gig drive that's attached to our router is there. But let's, uh, let's throw a couple files in there just to see what it does. Perfect, so we were able to successfully connect 
with a Mac to our Samba shear that was off of our tomato firmware router. So let's hop over to the Windows side real quick and see how it's done on that particular machine. We'll be right back. All right, so we're on the Windows side here and we want to access that share. So probably the easiest thing to do here is to hold down the Windows key, press R on the keyboard. You'll get the runtime dialog box here with the address of 192.168.10.1.100 GB, what we named it before. Hit OK. Once the password dialog box comes up, you can hit other, do NES, NES, like we did before, and voila, you can access all the files that you had before, no problem, that we copied over to the Mac. You'll notice that there's these ghost files here that the Mac produces, it's not a big deal. You'll only see those if you have hidden files turned on, so do a little demo here, we'll copy it off. And there you have it. Okay, so before we conclude here, I just wanted to point out that back in the USB and NAS setting of the router, under USB support, you have a bunch of supported file systems that you can select from. While most of them are good, the one you want to avoid is the fat one. That one there is not the best one you should be using. When it comes to long-term storage, you can always run into issues with it. But if you are running a Mac formatted disk, it's always a good idea to check this guy here for HFS or HFS+. Plus. As always, if you like what you see here, be sure to give this video a nice big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, or even leave a comment. It would be greatly appreciated. This is Dan from Southpaw Computing, folks, and as always, until the next time.